Uh, and now I am happy to present to you our next uh, speaker. Uh, that's uh, Prashan Mohesh, uh, which will speak about Mauritius under the threat of climate change. Uh, Prashan is the founder and expedition leader of the Oceanic Project. Uh, and he is using storytelling to explore, educate people, uh, tell uh, people about his findings and take action to, uh, uh, to do conservation and protection work. Uh, Prashant, are you with us? Hello. I'm sorry, how are you? Great, excited to see you. Same, uh, yeah, it is really amazing to be here on this special occasion as well. Yes, happy Biodiversity Day. Happy Biodiversity Day, everyone. Well, dear Prashan, um, the stage is yours. Yep, I'm gonna share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Awesome. We can see and hear you and we can see the screen. Okay, awesome. So um, today I'm gonna speak a little bit about Mauritius under the threat of climate change. So. Where is Mauritius located? So we are just a subtropical island country in the Indian Ocean, just uh, over 1,130 1, kilometers east of Madagascar, Southern Africa. So Mauritius is just a small island and we have a small volcanic island and we have some amazing biodiversity. And if we want to celebrate that today, uh, we must have a look of the Mauritius. So, uh, most people know about the famous quote of Mark Twain. So Mauritius was made first and then heaven, and that heaven was copied of the Mauritius. So uh, Mauritius being a small island, it, which is really overlooked in the Indian Ocean because we have 1.2 million of inhabitants. And also Mauritius has a sister island named Rodriguez with 42,000 of inhabitants. So we are just a small island in the Indian Ocean and uh, we, we have an amazing biodiversity. And when we say Mauritius, we know the story of the dodo, which is now extinct. But Mauritius is char characterized by high level of endemism with 39% of plants, 80% of non-marine birds, and sorry, non-marine birds, and 80% of reptiles, and 40% of bat species reported as endemic. As a result of our island location, age, isolation, and varied topography. So here are some picture, pictures of pink pigeon and also the biodiversity of our, my island from above. And uh, we have the Chamarel waterfall and the gecko in pictures. So why is my island under threat of climate change? So myself, um, I have been exploring a lot around Mauritius have been hiking a lot of mountains and I have seen that there we have less than 1.3 percent of native forest remaining and uh, which are home to many of these endemic species so here is a picture of a friend of mine we have been exploring we have been collecting a lot of trash in mountains so in Mauritius we are currently like um, building roads and we have to cut uh, trees and uh, deforestation is the key contributor to human caused climate change. And uh, our forest is often referred to as carbon sink. So Mauritius situation near the equator, we are directly impacted to the threat of climate change because our ocean are becoming more acidic and uh, uh, we have less forest as well. And it is a great challenge for me, like someone who dive, I'm a body certified diver with a specialty dive by Project Aware. So, Project Away, which is a dive against debris. So we have less forest and it is one of my greatest challenge for me actually when I go diving. So our ocean health, so approximately 5% of the ocean have has been explored, which leaves 95% unexplored. And uh, 
like I have said, Mauritius, our coral reef are dying at an alarming rate. So I have been diving a lot around the island and it is really catastrophic to see our reef dying at an alarming rate. And uh, it is not a secret that also our action on land are disrupting and making this biodiversity balance unstable. So we are also like the Indian Ocean is also considered the second world largest overfishing area. And uh, um, throughout my time I've been exploring and I have seen that the percentage of fish in our lagoon are decreasing as well. So uh, coral reef are home to many species of of fish as well, and like you you can see on the second picture here, the reef are really dying, dying and uh, diving a lot around the island. It is catastrophic to see graveyard or dead coral, and fish are still calling this their home. So, my exploration journey begins uh, with an undersea walk. So, I was someone who feared the ocean, and uh, I was really scared of the ocean. Like every time. I see I see the at the beach, I see the ocean really like turquoise blue water. I want to explore it more, but my parents say that we must not lose sight of you. And uh, I was really curious about the ocean because I haven't learned much about this in school. And also I'm, I'm a graphic designer, I'm not a marine biologist, I'm the founder and expedition leader of the Oceanic Project. But my exploration journey has really inspired me to explore more of the ocean floor. So uh, in the first picture, my undersea walk in 2016, and I was really curious to see like fish coming near me. And uh, behind me, you can see some coral reef which are dead. It was in 2016, so I didn't know much about the coral reef because I haven't learned about that in school. And for me, coral reef was just about an underwater structure, and uh, I didn't care about coral reef. But I haven't touched coral reef. Like I know it is an structure, but I don't need to touch it. So. Having no knowledge we, about coral reef, and uh, one day I decided that I need to explore the ocean. And then, after my second, uh, first undersea walk, and uh, I started to conquer my fear and started to to see to have the feeling that fear is only an emotion. And most people fear the ocean because we know more about uh, the the moon, the Mars, and also we don't know much about our ocean flow. So I want to explore that more in the Indian Ocean where much people haven't explored. So this is my first underwater photo I took in 2017. And uh, like I have said, coral reef was just some underwater structure for me, like fish are just going, coming and going. And it was just like an underwater structure. So I started my citizen science research and started learning more about the threat affecting coral reef and coral reef the importance to fish and a lot to protect my island as well so mauritius island has uh, we are protected most about the reef from tsunami a lot of natural calamities all of that so i started exploring more and i became a body certified diver last year and uh, i've been diving a lot around the island so this is cathedral cave i took this photo on 6 march and this shows that Mauritius Island is uh, is a volcanic island and we have some amazing underwater caves and the best diving spot for me was Cathedral Cave and uh, yeah I started learning more about the importance of our reef and also our reef are dying and I've said to myself that the importance to preserve that biodiversity which was the glory of Mauritius we, I need to preserve that because I know there are some organizations in Mauritius which was supposed to protect that, but I see there are some inaction as well. So I started to do my own research and started like some beach cleanup and also some simple action and so plant, plant trees, beach cleanup. And uh, I wanted to restore the reef as well. So it was quite challenging for me because I don't know how to do it. So I started getting engaged with some of my friends who are marine bi biologists and we started making some research and started doing some coral restoration and uh, this is human action our action on land are disrupting and making this biodiversity balance unstable like we can see there is another trash there and people just litter on the first on the first bin so 
they don't want to work to go a little eat elsewhere or carry that, um, bringing it their own ho their own houses to litter it. So, as well on the second picture, it is at the foot of Lepus Mountain, which is uh, behind my house. Um, Lepus Mountain is found in the Port Louis, the capital of Mauritius. So there is a lot of trash as well in nature, and uh, human action is greatly contributing towards this uh, disturbing this balance and. Uh, there is also that gurney sack that I have removed from the ticket of Stakhoun Coral. So it, it was crazy to see that how can this gurney sack travel in the ocean current and end up stuck in, in this uh, Stakhoun Coral. So that, that made me think as well that there's something we need to do like to make Mauritians more realize that we are losing a big part of paradise, which is Mauritius Island, our coral reef which is the glory of Mauritius. So oh. climate change. In 2013, we had faced a deadly flash flood causing death to 11 people. So uh, in the first picture, you can see that big companies like Coca-Cola, Sprite, Fanta, Mountain Dew, there's no secret that these companies are driving the global plastic waste crisis, but it is really catastrophic for this flash flood. We have seen a lot of these plastic bottle ending up in our ocean. And also um, in the second picture, you can see that water is increasing and Mauritius is really vulnerable to the threat of climate change. And uh, for me, uh, this uh, flash flood was a warning that my island is vulnerable to the threat of climate change and something needs to be done. Something needs to be done because if this continue to happen, we will be losing a big part of paradise. And the biggest question of all time would be how many lives will we lose and how will humanity? And I have been thinking a lot about that and the life of Mauritians are in danger, but most of them don't realize they just continue to litter and litter, but something needs to be done. And uh, in 2021, we had another torrential rainfall on the 28th of April and uh, it was challenging as well because you can see trees have been falling down and all of this is just a continuum and uh, people now must realize that our island are being affected and uh, we need to join the race the race is on we need to join it like bring our forces together and take action every simple action to help restore our forest to help do some beach cleanup and people must realize that we need to join forces, not being lazy in our comfort zone and uh, just instead of waiting for the government to take action, and that's the mindset of Mauritius, they just want the uh, government to take action, but they don't want to take action by on their own hands. So coral bleaching, I have been spending a lot of time underwater to capture bleaching events. So on the first picture, you can see that the coral reef was quite healthy, but on the second picture, you can see that the reef are dying at an alarming rate in Mauritius. That, that's no secret that if we lose our coral reef, we will lose a big part of uh, of our reef here in Mauritius, which protect us from tsunami, all this stuff. So, and again, I have been spending a lot of time to capture bleaching event, and I'm, I'm a strong advocate for the SDGs for the life below water and. Uh, I share stories on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, about how our reef are affected over time. But in Mauritius, we've, the greatest challenge for us is climate change and uh, ocean acidification and also having less rainforest, native forests. And uh, this is our greatest challenge here in Mauritius. And uh, throughout my journey, I have decided that something needs to be done. And uh, I can't wait. Like the government to take action. Like last time, uh, last year we had an oil spill, the MV Wakashi crashed into our barrier reef. And uh, I have seen that people have been joining forces together and doing some sober booms to protect our lagoon and to spread, to stop the oil spill. So I haven't understood that people in Mauritius um, 
they want to take action only when an, an environmental catastrophe happens, but they don't want to do some simple action from their own houses to take uh, to protect our environment, nature, and the ocean. So my exploration journey had led me to found the, the Oceanic Project, which I uh, used the mission of storytelling to explore, educate, and take action to protect our ocean. So, so far, our, our mission has expanded into Rodrigues as well. So our youth in Rodrigues are directly taking action to do some more cleanups so that we can stop plastic from getting in our ocean and also our rivers as well. So if we litter on land, somehow our trash will get into rivers and can or canals traveling and ending up in our ocean. So a great friend of mine supported my idea for the Oceanic Project and we have been working together to do some educational programs. So on the first picture, we have been teaching the youth about the importance of the ocean because in Mauritius, I believe that there is a non-education about our ocean flow, and uh, we just keep going on academic. We haven't been learning much about the ocean. So I have been teaching in summer camp, engaging students to take action. And also I have been using National Geographic resources for that. And they were quite inspired. Like, or we've been after that, we made a beach cleanup. And you can see that in the back, there's a lot of plastic butter. So, I have put myself in the place of these youth, like how can we turn the tide and engage them to adopt a greener lifestyle? So I, I thought that making flower pot is really a great idea to engage the youth, like they are eight to 14 years old, we have been making uh, flower pots and this made them to build a connection with nature as well. So to plant more trees because like we have 1.3% native forest remaining and I'm glad that after after our teaching session, a parent came to me and said that, you know, National Geographic resources is really powerful. And my, my son just told me that we need to remove every plastic bottle from our home and everything regarding plastic, and we need to replace them with bamboo. And that that quite inspired me to lead to lead more and engage more students with a great friend of mine. So we started uh, launching more programs for the Oceanic Projects. and. Uh, we are happy that the youth are engaging with us as well because National Geographic resources is really powerful and um, they are learning more about uh, how we can take simple action. And also my, my dive story is as a body certified diver. I've been diving out around the island and also I have been removing all kinds of trash and in the second pitch, in the first picture, there's my friend with me, the Oceanic Project friend. So we have been removing a lot of fishing lines, plastic bottles, and also one of the craziest stuff is beer cans. Beer cans we have, we found that deep in the ocean, like in, in 15 meters, beer can um, on the ocean floor. So I'm also a paddy certified diver by Project Away, so where conservation meets adventure. And my, my diary stories inspired me to engage the youth to do more color restoration programs. So, um, I haven't yet taken some pictures about my coral nursery bed because we had a lockdown, so I was not able to adventure more. But we are planning to help to restore the coral reef in Mauritius. So we are using National Geographic to teach them about what we can do and also making some simple coral nursery bed because I know that there is a lot of organization who will need funding for that. but. For me, thinking critically, we can use crop materials to build a coral nursery bed. And uh, it's the youth who can join forces to do that. And using crop materials, we are currently making some fun because I believe that to engage the youth, it must be fun. And we are making, in our coral nursery, there will be a small cookie, like uh, a, a coral nursery, we'll be using that. And uh, with concrete, we make cookies with concrete. so. We will just lay our coral on, on the concrete, which is in the form of cookie, and we can name our coral. So over time, maybe that, that young person can become a director, CEO of the company. So uh, there will be people saying to him that, you, you know, I only lay on this place. And this person will say that I own a coral nursery and I have been contributing throughout my life to protecting Mauritius biodiversity. So long story in short, that we want to engage the youth to preserve our 
coral reef because it is the glory of Boeotia's island. And if we are losing our reef, we are losing a big part of paradise. And with rising water temperature and water level as well, Mauritius is greatly affected by climate change, but most people don't realize that. And my mission is to keep engaging the youth to protect our ocean and just simple action, plant trees, and also adopting a greener lifestyle. Whenever we, you are at work or you want to inspire someone, you can say that you are bringing a plastic borders, but instead of that, why not a, invest in a, um, in, in a product that will last longer? So, we want to make more people realize that it's it's now who it's now time to make a difference to help protect our planet and also if we if we don't do that we we have the 30 times 30 vision and we will be constantly losing the reef and uh, Mauritius will be badly affected and more lives will be lost and the greatest question of all time is how will humanity end? It's just that humanity, like human action, will end us eventually. And it's just that small island like Mauritius who are affected first and then big developing nations who will be affected. So we are on the race to save incredible wildlife, wild, wild spaces, species, and also the ocean as well. So we just want to inspire more people to join our race and save Mauritius from the threat of climate change. Thank you so much. So it was great to be here speaking about Mauritius. And also, if you have any question, you can contact me on my social media, Twitter or Instagram. Thank you very much, Parshan. This uh, uh, this this was great. This was amazing. Um, I would like to say thank you for all your work and inspiring and empowering the youth to care to protect the ocean. Uh, and I completely agree that it, uh, if you want to make a change, A, it takes a step. B, encourage uh, the younger generation. They are the future. They have very, very powerful voices. And uh, is right, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. uh, isn't, isn't it amazing when when you see the spark in, uh, in a child's, uh, in the child's eyes, uh, and the willingness to uh, to be an asset to protect nature. They care so much. They inspire. Um, I'm sure they inspire all of us. And thank you for working with them. Uh, could you tell us how big your team is? Uh, in Mauritius, we have. Team. Okay, in Mauritius, we have like 70, 78 people, but we have more people joining forces soon. And in Rodrigues Island, uh, we have like we have the youth council as a whole on the island. So we are expected to have like 400 youth as well in Rodrigues. So they are really inspired to join forces in Rodrigues because they want to make Rodrigues Island recognized on a global level. And also it's just by small action who will make them recognized. Wow. Wow, that's 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 awesome. It's great that you inspire so many people to follow you uh, in, in this amazing, amazing initiative. Uh, what are the kids' most favorite projects? The, the cleanup programs or DIYs to protect nature? What do they love the most in Uh For me, like clean cleanup project is uh, uh, basic stuff that most people do, but. I want to engage them more to explore the ocean. Some of my future projects will be like partnering with diving centers and engaging them like to explore more the ocean and to know more about the ocean flow. So the fun part is that coral restoration as well because it it is really fun to like it is something unique to make coral cookies. Who who will think about that? And you name your coral as well. So that's something fun that we are doing more about that and also. Uh, I am currently making a documentary in Mauritius about uh, the tomorrow and the race is on, the tagline is the race is on. So it will be highlighted on that. So how can everyone take simple action from our own house and also our coral nursery, coral cookies program. So that's going to be a fun point in visual. 
That's great and that's very creative. Well, uh, yep. good luck with um, all your endeavors. Uh, do let us know where we can uh, where we can follow your amazing photography projects. Uh -huh. uh, you can you can follow on on my Instagram also. I I do post regular on Twitter about the the story of our reef in Mauritius and how we can take simple action to protect it. Okay. Sorry, Olga, I just wanted to pop in and say hello to, to, yeah. to you and the great man. I wanted to be in, in between two favorite yeah. people and two favorite places, Russia, Mauritius and, and Rod, Rodrigue. So well done, yeah. Prashant. Great to meet Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant the work you. you're doing. And, and Olga <laughs> um, and everybody watching, Prashant is one of our National Geographic Ocean Champions. He's one of the uh, a real key uh, uh, ingredient in ocean education for the well in National Geographic terms for the next 10 years and for global terms for for the rest of your life Prashant you're a, you're a key man keep up the great work thank you sir and thanks for reminding me about uh, Rodrigues too and uh, you yeah. know as you know I worked there for many years and for quite a bit in uh, Mauritius and then Seychelles I wish I was there with you now maybe in Mayburg for a nice cup of coffee Mayburg right. we can't go diving <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Olga. Bye -bye. Well done, Prashant. See you, see you later. Bye. -bye. Yep. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.